Not long before my mother died, she told me a story I'd never heard before. It was 1965, the year before she married my father. Spring had come to the Northeast nearly a season ahead of itself. By May, the fields rippled with thigh-deep green gold grasses, sweet Timothy alfalfa, bird's foot trefoil, clovers, reed canary grass, rye grass, and tall fescue. All the kids along Sweet Milk Road knew the species' names. They were weaned on the sweat of hay, and my mother and her brother Morgan were no different. It was a clear, bright Sunday morning, a perfect day for the first cut of the season. The fields around the farm were filled with the buzz and clang of sickle bar mowers and balers, while my mother Lida and Morgan stood toe to toe in a field blanketed with egg yolk colored mustard blossoms. They scrapped with one another on the strip of land between their farm and the Deitman property where no one could hear them. At first, my mother laughed at her brother's suggestion, like a late comer for Sunday dinner who asks for the platter of fried chicken to be passed only to find the plate is empty and the laughter trickles into awkward silence. She pleaded with Morgan, but he was of no mind to hear her. His decision, he claimed, was best for the family. She would marry Michael Deitman on her 18th birthday and their families and land would be united an isthmus to wealth and stability. All of that was changed when a bullet ripped through the leaves, shearing the air. Before either of them heard the sound of the report, it shattered Morgan's breastbone and sprayed bright red blood onto my mother Lida's face and hair. Morgan looked at her, his eyes filled with terror as he fell dead into the yellow mustard blossoms. Who did this, I asked. Well, she stammered, of course it was an accident. You have to know that, Joss. Someone was in the high birch grove, shooting at the birds. 